Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss about network flow algorithm. So under this network flow algorithm, so we are going to solve the problem called maximum flow problem. In order to solve this problem, so we are going to use one specific algorithm, so that is ford fulkerson algorithm. So how to implement this algorithm to solve the maximum flow problem? First let us discuss what is the problem statement given. So maximum flow problem means, so here the given uh, input is said to be a directed graph. So in the directed graph, how, uh, so the directed graph can be related to any kind of networks. So which means the network system consists of many number of computers and in between the computers we are going to uh, send the data from one device to another device through some channels or through the links. So here we can relate the graph in uh, uh, to this network system. So here all the nodes in the graph are represented as different devices and all the edges that were represent uh, how we going to select the path to send from one uh, device to another device. So here the edges can be represented as a channel or the uh, any medium that can act as a uh, uh, transferring a data from one device to another device. So here if you take a channel so that uh, provides the link uh, or uh, that provides a connection between any two devices. So we can check initially what could be the capacity of the channel so based on that we can send the amount of data. If you are sending data uh, file uh, size has been exceed, so ex if it exceeds the capacity uh, size then we cannot send that particular data through that channel. So this is what the uh, basic uh, constraint that we need to satisfy whenever you want to send any data through the channel. So within that limit whatever we have specified for that uh, channel so what could be the capacity of the channel so within that capacity we have to send the data so your file size must not exceed the capacity of the channel so this is what the basic constraint to be followed for this problem so we need to check what could be the minimum capacity and based on the minimum capacity we can able to find the maximum flow of data through that channel this is what the problem statement. So let us see what are all the inputs for this problem and what could be the output. So here uh, usually we will represent all the problems with the help of the graph. So here also we are taking the graph and it is said to be a directed graph G which consists of vertices and edges V, E. So here this could be the directed graph. So before that, so I will tell you the real uh, time example for this problem transportation network and also the fluid network so transportation network so in um, some network which is used to, to transport some, uh, some amount of data or some kind of data that is what transportation network so fluid network so whatever the medium we are just representing a, a, as to transfer any kind of data so that will be considered as a pipe so through that pipe we use to send the data so that is what fluid networks so we can relate this problem with this example. So here this graph consists of vertices and edges. So he, uh, this graph uh, will also some of the nodes will be represented as a source node and other some node which is represented as a target node. So we are using some specific terms to represent the source node which is S and the target node we are representing it as sync node that is T. So here each and every uh, directed graph must consist of a single source node and a single sync node that is the target node. And all other nodes are said to be the internal node except this target node and the source node all other nodes are said to be the internal nodes. Through that internal nodes we can able to send the data from source to target node. So this is what the problem. So here what are all the other rules to be followed. So here and each and every edge we have in between every pair of vertices in the graph must hold some value and that value we are assigning it as a capacity value. 
because each and every nodes we are uh, uh, treating as a system and each uh, edge we are representing it as a channel and what could be the size or what could be the capacity of the channel so that we can take it um, by using that value whatever we are providing for the edge so value of that edge is nothing but the channel capacity okay so no edge enters source and no edge leaves sink so what does it mean so for each and every source node as well as this target node a uh, source node will does not have any uh, incoming edges because from the source node we start uh, traversing the uh, different paths in the graph and also for the target node it does not have any outgoing edges so that is what no inflow into the source source node and no outflow from the target node so this is what no edge enters source and no edge leaves sink so next one is at least one edge on each node so each node in the graph must consists of one edge at least it has one edge so it can have more than one edge all the capacitors are integer so whatever the values we are providing for the edges which are nothing but capacity because we are treating this edge as the link between any two systems so that link will have some capacity so that value only we are providing for this edge so all the edge values must be a real integer value so that is what the positive values so next one so in addition to this capacity so edge has also represented with one more value that is flow value so here because we need to mention so what could be the data flow that we can send from one system to another system so that is what we are representing here flow value so here h is uh, is nothing but r plus which is nothing but a positive real uh, integer value okay so that is what the flow value so here uh, whenever you are providing the flow value for any edges in addition to the capacity value so it must follow one rule and that uh, name of the rule is said to be capacity rule so here the flow value must be lesser than or equal to capacity value so whatever the value you are providing for flow so it must be less than or equal to the capacity value of the same edge f of e represents a flow value of that edge and c of e represents the capacity of that edge so here the flow value lies in the range of 0 to the capacity value suppose if you give the capacity value is 10 so then your flow value must be 0 to 10 so it must be lesser than or equal to capacity so it will also be equal to 10 but it should not exceed 10 so that is the capacity rule and one more rule we need to follow whenever you are working with this maximum flow problem conservation rule which means the number of inflow i mean the inflow which is equal to the outflow for each and every vertex that were available in the graph so what do you mean by inflow and what do you mean by outflow so inflow means the total value of the flow for all the incoming edges of any node is said to be inflow so of one particular node is said to be inflow and outflow is the total value of that flow of all the outgoing edges which is nothing but outflow okay so for if you take any one node so you can uh, uh, test whether its inflow value is equal to outflow value so you can test so here in the given graph it consists of four vertices okay and two one is said to be the source vertex and this one is said to be the target vertex so we need to send data from the source to target through the internal nodes these two are said to be the internal nodes you have only two that is u and v so you can send data through this u or else v so you can select any path in order to send data from source to target node so you can check for the internal node so what could be the inflow value it has only one incoming edge and its flow value is given as 20 okay uh, so here it is actually not the flow value it is nothing but capacity value so you can check it with the flow value suppose if you are giving um, it as 
10 suppose your flow value is 10 here and here the flow value is 5 and here the flow value is 5 you can check it so here the incoming edge has its flow value as 10 and outgoing it has actually two outgoing edges so one flow value is 5 and another outgoing edge flow value is 5 so you can add these two so you'll be getting 10 so both are actually equal inflow must be equal to outflow for any node you can also check with this node um, so here the flow value has not mentioned so but if you are providing the flow value so it must um, uh, equal to the outflow inflow value must be equal to outflow value so that is what for each and every node we need to check in the graph so that is what the conservation rule so actually in order to solve this problem we have to follow these two rules one is capacity rule and another one is conservation rule and what is the maximum value of this flow? So whenever you are going for uh, checking with the source node and for the target node. So we don't have the inflow for source node. So though we have only outgoing edges from source node. And we don't have outflow in the target node. Because we don't have any outgoing edges in the um, target node. So we don't have incoming edges in the source node whereas no outgoing edges are available in the target node. So we cannot able to find inflow in the source node and outflow in the target node. But we can able to find what could be the outflow of source node because we may get many outgoing edges from the source node. So the total value of outflow which is equivalent to the total value, value of the in, uh, flow value of incoming edges to the target node so that is what maximum value of flow okay summation of e out of s that is outflow of s f of e so what could be the total value of the flow that uh, we are getting the outgoing edges from source so that must be equal to the in degree uh, i mean uh, inflow of t that is the target node so and this value we can represent as the maximum value of flow so and uh, in order to solve this maximum flow problem so we need to study about some basic terminologies what we are going to use in this algorithm. So let's see what are all the terms we have to use. So first one is residual graph. So in the residual graphs, residual graph means so initially we will be getting one normal graph and that is said to be the uh, uh, flow network or network flow graph. So in that graph we will be having the number of vertices and edges in the same way if you are doing some computation in each and every edge because we are going to select some path and that path we can represent as a augmenting path right augmenting path and afterwards we will be computing some values such as residual capacity and um, bottleneck capacity so all those uh, values will be computed on the given input graph and afterwards we will be getting one graph is said to be the residual graph. So what are all the computations we are actually going to perform. And afterwards we will be finding one uh, new graph which consists of same vertices and edges. But some values has been computed with the edges. Uh, edges values so the, with the flow value and the capacity value has been changed. So after doing all those changes we will be calling that graph as a residual graph. So I'll tell you what is this residual capacity. If you are subtracting the capacity value with the flow value and that is what residual capacity. So first I will define all these terms afterwards while uh, solving the problem so you can understand what is the meaning of these terms. So augmenting path means so whatever the path we are selecting between the source and target node is said to be augmenting path. Next one bottleneck capacity so in order to send the data flow so first we need to find out which is having the minimum residual capacity which edge is having the minimum residual capacity that is what bottleneck capacity. Okay. So in the next video we will discuss about the uh, how to solve this maximum flow problem with the help of Ford Fulkerson algorithm as well as what could be the analysis of that algorithm. Thank you.